Are we live? Come on. Wake up, phone. Past due. The phone says we're past due. Oh, official. Okay, welcome to the second Saturday Artist Talk, except it's Friday. <laughs> and uh, it's a hair before second Saturday. Um, I... I want to talk a little bit about the format change of this compared to what this normally has been. So for the last six years, Aggregate Space Gallery has set aside uh, an exhibition a year to present to a recently graduating Master of Fine Arts student. Um, and we usually choose this based on going to as many of the Bay Area MFA shows as possible and just checking out what the, uh, what the work is, and then reaching out to a few people, interviewing them, and going through a process to aggregate spaceship, which we're um, being generously hosted here at Warehouse 416 while we search for new space, because we got priced out of the, the last one. Um, and if anybody wants to learn about what happened at the last aggregate space gallery, we have um, this really excellent book that's sitting over there on the bar. Um, but I want to welcome the sixth MFA Invitational honoree, um, uh, Vincent Miranda, um, who's here with us um, in a bit of a different format. So, so normally, again, the exhibition would be up. We would be in your amazing exhibition that would be happening at Aggregate Space Gallery. Um, but unfortunately, because we switched some things up, we're going to just look at um, a brief presentation of your work, which you're going to talk through. And I think Lane's going to help um, run the presentation. And then I will return, and we'll talk a little bit. And then everybody can go about your evening and hang out. And um, um, I, I think the, the purpose always of these talks is to really just put a, a legacy in place and really examine an, uh, an artist's history um, amidst the present tense version of their work. Um, and so I hope that this, uh, no matter how it works out, is useful for you in your future and is useful for aggregate in its future as we look back on um, you know, your time and where you were in your career at this point and where we were as an organization at this point. So we're kind of just getting a snapshot and we're live streaming this on YouTube and you'll be able to watch it later if you find anything really interesting and you want to reference it. Um, please hang out. Welcome and, and good luck. Thank you very much. All right, I'll see you in like 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be over here watch. Okay. So first of all, thank you guys all for coming. I really appreciate, you know, you making the, the trip out here. Um, the way I thought I'd talk about the work is kind of like going through some former pieces. Um, you can go to the next slide. And then um, just talking a little bit about things I'm thinking about for the future. And um, yeah, like I kind of wanted to like almost take like some pages from my sketchbook and like present it in a uh, presentation form. Um, so this first slide is a screenshot from Future's video for Coding Crazy. Um, the reason I wanted to start with this is because I really like how the this particular moment has these like ripples in it. Um, he's kind of leaning, he's a little off balance. There's a um, double, double cup in the center of the screen. And there's this, um, there's this purple filter over the whole thing. And um, you go to the next one. And so the reason I bring that up is because my early work, I was really like interested in um, the drink lean and the, I guess the, the role that it was playing in Southern hip hop. Um, this is Future's album Dirty Sprite 2 and came out around 2015, something like that. You can go to the next one. So the um, so I'm thinking about Lean and how like it, it was sort of playing this role as this like symbol for um, for wealth or status in the in the music and I was really interested in how like coming from the south um, hearing that in the music I that kind of played a bit more. I could relate to that a little bit more. I, could, I was seeing that with, you know, around me with people using it, utilizing it. Um, so it was, it was a little different for me to listen to it rather than somebody on like the West Coast or something, right? So 
I'm thinking about the ingredients promethazine with Sprite and Jolly Ranchers drink out of um, two styrofoam cups. Um, I'm really trying to portray the, the feeling that this drink brings on this like lean and bring it into the, the physical realm, I guess. Oh, uh, you can go to the next one. Um, keep um, continuing on. I'm still thinking about the lean. Um, I'm also thinking about how it, it's commonly thought of like the thicker the concoction, the higher the quality. So I'm like, damn, I'm like if, imagine if the mixture was like so thick that it was like frozen in time, something like that. Um, so, and as a, as an artist, like I'm taking a lot of what these art, these musicians are saying and I kind of am almost viewing it as like my responsibility to um, like bring some of these lyrics that they're manifesting in, in like a in like a verbal sense and manifesting it in like the, the, these physical objects. Um, so yeah, so you go to the next one. So yeah, still thinking about lean and those two pieces were like pre-grad school. So I come into grad school, I'm still thinking about it. Um, really trying to get this, uh, I guess the, the vibe or the, the feeling that the lean brings on this like heaviness, this weight, and really trying to bring it into the, um, into this physical space, into the gallery space. Um, I think just like aesthetically, I'm always like, really uh, influenced by like people like Daniel Arsham, very minimal, like, um, so I'm thinking about how I can maybe affect the architecture of the gallery of this white cube to respond to this drink, right? You can go to the next one. Um, and again, I'm like, these are some close-ups, you can keep going. Um, yeah, so this is what, like, middle of grad school. I'm still thinking about the lean, but I think there there was this shift where I started to um, think about it more as a, rather than the effects of this narcotic, thinking of it more as a symbol for wealth or status. And um, I think it's important to point out that the, the um, bottle, or the promethazine with codeine that is used in the mixture is made by this company called Activist. Activist, while I'm making this work, pulls it off the market. It goes, it goes from two fifty a bottle to like two two thousand to three thousand a bottle. So it it sh it shifted the way that people were using it in the music, like as a reference. It was rather than referring to it as like this is the mood I'm on, this is the tip I'm on. It's more like, I can afford to drink this. I can, I have the means of, of this uh, mixture, right? So I'm thinking a lot about this idea of, um, I guess like wealth or status in the music and also thinking of like how that, how that um, is represented in the culture, I guess, and, and that space, that the, the South, like, um, just being down there, you can kind of, it's a little more like tangible or like potent, you can see it everywhere. Um, so yeah, so you can go to the next one. This is a close up of that one. Um, no, that's fine, you could keep going. Um, so I put this in there, this is Dripper Drown, this is uh, Gunna's album Dripper Drown 2. And towards the end of grad school, it's like what, 2019, 2018 maybe? Um, he makes this album and it's like filled with drip, water, like glass, all these references to jewelry. And I think that like the reason that I put this in there and the album before is because I think the South has like a tendency to take on the persona of like certain projects that are released, right? And like, so with the future album, I almost pictured like this like purple veil over the whole south like people were just like slowed down right and then with when this came out just like I, I'm 
like everybody's talking about drip and this water and like I'm iced out like so I think I, I started to really think about that a lot more and like um, how, how I could like include some of those like references or some of those some of those moods in in a physical object in like a in a tangible object you can keep going um, so yeah so I started I'll talk about the glass later maybe but the glass and, and their vessels so they're filled with water so that's definitely a like direct connection to um, that gunna album and thinking about like drip or drown like how like just water is like like such a huge part of um, how we talk about that culture um, but I'm also thinking about so like down south we wear gold and how like it's used as like this um, way to show st status also like sort of like the lean uh, sort of like the drink and thinking about how like I don't know if any of you are familiar with like Kodak Black, but like he's like super popular for like this gesture, like this, um, which is used to like show off the gold teeth, right? And it became so much so that like um, every time I'm down there, like you, you, you would see, you would just do this with like no golds in, and you're everybody like knows what you're referencing. So it almost became so much so that the gesture was as important as the object that you're showing off. So I became really interested in the, the importance of a gesture and how um, how that can hold a lot of weight in the space, right? Um, you can go to the next one. This is like another view of that. Um, yeah, so just really like hyper-focusing on the gesture. You can go to the next one. So then this is like towards the end of grad school and I'm like, I like that I'm exploring these gestures and everything. I'm, I'm th these are gestures that are used to like present jewelry and in turn present this sort of status symbol. Um, so I like I'm thinking about the gestures, but I'm like, damn, they're like so stagnant. They're so like rigid. How can I start introducing movement into these? Um, so I started thinking of them as like these like stutters or like this like effect of like stuttering the hands as like a way to introduce movement. And I, um, I was also thinking a lot about in the music, there's like a stutter, there's like a stuttering effect that's used to create sort of like a rhythm or cadence in the music so, so that it's not so like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's like, to, 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 you know, like, so just really, res I don't know, in a way trying to like, take this part of the music that you really wouldn't, it's not like tangible, there's no tangible, um, there's nothing tangible that's representing that stutter in the music. So how could I like, maybe bring that into this physical realm? Um, so yeah, you could go to the next one. These are some close-ups of that. Um, and what I, one thing I find like really, that I really like about this piece is this is done from all the people that I'm holding. Um, I make sure that they're from the South, they're from this region. Um, this one in particular, I really, it didn't happen like this until after the mold or after the casting was finished, but um, I was using, all of these different fingers are from different models that I was, or different people that I molded. So like that thumb is from one person, the hand is from another person. Um, my fingers are like in the back on the other side. So like it, it was almost, it almost turned into this like communal, this like sense of community in an object, which I really like, like because the more I'm making this work is the more I'm like talking about this identity, this sense of like, community, this, um, this southern culture in a, in a way, so, yeah, so, you can go to the next one. Okay, so, yeah, so this brings me to kind of what I'm thinking about now, and um, 
before I was definitely thinking about the whole South and now I'm starting to really trying to, and when I say the whole South, I mean like Southern hip hop and everything that that entails, which is like, you know, my, Miami, Atlanta, all the way to Houston, even like Memphis, I would consider like Southern hip hop. Um, but now I'm trying to like hone it in and, and really focus on Florida and like South Florida, which is where I'm from and, and really think about, um, different things that, that make up this space. Um, these are Florida oranges. Um, so like they're, you know, obviously very unique to the space. You can go to the next. Um, these are dunks. We, we read dunks. This is Broward County in particular. Um, and like these aren't just like random images. These are cars that are like from my neighborhood. And I was really like drawn also to like certain parts of the image, like even the like trees are like kind of like Florida specific. The paint, the treatment of the pavement is like like Broward specific at least. Um, so yeah, you can go to the next one. Um, Zephyr Hills like water bottle. This is like a Florida company. Um, yeah, you can go to the next one. Uh, we wear golds down there, like <laughs> grills and stuff. Um, when you when they're full like that, it's called double walled. Like, like you got two walls in your office. <laughs> um, so yeah, which brings me to these objects that I've been working on, and I've been really trying to like make that that stuttering motion or that like sense of movement more um, more apparent. And like with the with the hand that I showed you guys, the I think there was like almost like too much space in between them and it was like creating this like I don't know obstruction between that sense of movement that I wanted so I started like casting them to where they're like close together like that or closer together um, and for me I think that really reads more as like this like sense of movement um, and then I also started to um, work on these in other uh, formats. So in the next slide, um, this is a video. And this is my friend Kiana. Um, she, yeah, she sent me this and we were working on like, uh, like affecting these videos to respond to the, um, just like, I guess still thinking about that sense of movement and that stutter. Um, yeah, you could go ahead. might be in the YouTube video, it might automatically mute when you play it. thinking a lot about like trying to portray like when I'm done um, so the sounds important just because this is um, the style of music is called fast music it's like a um, it's like super popular out of Broward County um, so the video's got like all these elements, this like, these waving gestures, the golds, and the fast music, this, um, all these elements of South Florida that are like so pertinent in that space. And yeah, so like, this isn't just like a random video. Um, but I, I guess I'm really trying to get across to the viewer like, what I see when I'm down there and like this emphasis on these gestures and um, yeah and I think there, if you go to the next one 
So these are just some like quick snapshots of my studio that I took before, like the other day, just to, I don't know, just be like kind of present day with, with you guys. Um, I've been blowing a lot of glass to, um, again, to like responding to this. So I guess I'll say here, like the glass and the, 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 all the glass that I do is filled with water. So the glass and the water to me is a, um, is a stand-in for this idea of the come up, which I guess is kind of uh, touches on like all these, all different parts of like um, the the work that I'm exploring, the culture. Um, the come up is this idea of like coming up out of these socioeconomic conditions and how that manifests in jewelry, you know, clothes, like um, bowls, whatever. Um, so, I guess with like earlier works, like with the hands like stuttering, like there are like rings on there, and I don't know. For me, like those are a little, maybe a little like too like too too like literal of representations of the jewelry. So I'm like trying to find ways to like represent them a little bit more abstractly. And so the glass for me is like a stand-in for that that idea of a come up and this like yeah uh, and you can go to the next one I think it's just a one you could like leave up it's just like my studio table <laughs> from the other day there's an orange there too <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I think that's I'd love to hear what if you guys have questions thanks so much yeah Great. So, Shaggy, can we can we increase the lights a little bit? Yeah. Um, like, is that is that expanding foam or is that resin? The, the A and B, the Douglas and the Sturgis A and B silicone. Silicone. Yeah. Oh, I don't like resin. Resin's no. But I, perfect, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, that's all really, really exciting and really interesting, and um, I'm excited to see where the work goes. I mean, I think, I think what I got um, interested in when I first saw your work was that you were obviously offering offering a um, substantive um, comment on hip hop culture, um, but doing it in a in a very traditional sculptural way. Mm -hmm. um, about how how that process came about because even in the most the earliest works that you you've shown you were already in this this casting you, you were already like casting things and working with plasters and um yeah i think for me like i was the silicone really came in all the hands and body parts are made of silicone mm -hmm. um i think that really came in um just wanting to from wanting to introduce the body into the space but the more I think about it like a lot of the materials I'm using are what you would consider like contemporary materials I guess or like non-traditional and for me it like really correlates with the um, like I'm exploring I always tell people I'm, I'm talking about the contemporary South not like you know Jim Crow South or nothing like that right. so for me like using contemporary materials is like falls in line with those that, you know, right, that, that talk, like, idea of presentness right and, like, the conceptual thread of the work, yeah. um, did you grow up in Miami? I did yeah. well I grew up in Lauderdale Broward County right. um, but I don't know if you'll talk to anybody that's from like South Florida like it's like those three counties Dade County Broward mm -hmm. County Palm Beach County nobody stays in one one county like you're always like intersecting between the three so for me it's like south florida as, right. as a whole yeah right what 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 um did you study undergrad down there um i did at fau um not an art school um, oh. but yeah they had like a decent art program um yeah and you you got into sculpture yeah like that 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 was like my first um that was when I like started to look like concentration in sculpture and mm -hmm. everything and I don't know I guess for me I just like um, I, 
can't like I'm not like my mind doesn't work like on the two D like plane, so I just right. like it works better like, working in three dimensions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I should I should just take a like a brief moment to make an aside that like like normally when we would be doing this um, and this is one of the reasons I didn't want to offer any introduction is that, that I, I kind of like the idea of the art speaking and then the conversation happening. Um, and it, although this was obviously different than that, I, that's why I didn't offer any introduction sure. or kind of step into this. And <laughs> I wanted people to kind of come into your work cold for those of you that haven't seen it, although I hope a lot of you have, have found, found ways to see it in physical form in the past. Um, so so you're, you're like, what, were you, what did you go to undergrad for? Like what were you studying? First couple of years, yeah. yeah, yeah. Before uh, you found sculpture, I think I was just undecided for like three years, and then, like <laughs> I was like, "Oh, this art thing is kind of cool." Like, yeah. "Oh, plaster, that's nice." Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Not definitely not thinking of the financial side. Yeah, you know, yeah at all. that's <laughs> smart. You don't want to do that unless you don't ever get into it. Yeah, um, sure. And then you found your way to uh, to California. Yeah, um, a good friend of mine, Woody Othello, had a great experience out at CCA, mm -hmm. so I was like, oh shit, like, okay, let me try the grad school thing, got in, and like, um, yeah, and I was, it, it was a great experience. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, so, yeah. learned you, a lot. Yeah. What, do you, what do you feel like, I mean, so like, you, you, you kind of presented this trajectory of, of both kind of studying this hip-hop culture that you're, you're surrounded with um, when you were still there. Right. right. Um, a, a, along with kind of experimenting with new materials and new techniques to kind of present that work. Right. right. Um, do you feel like, like what do, you, what do you see about CCA that kind of helped you down, um, down that path? I think definitely the, the, what I got most from CCA was being able to talk about my work. Like, right. I was... I, I was, so like I was also doing a lot of preparator work in between undergrad and grad school. So like, I was getting learning a lot about how to work with materials and stuff. So I had this sort of like thick like technical background, but I was like I don't even know why like why I'm making this thing like, right. or how to describe it. And I think yeah, definitely CCA or and coming out to grad school like. Um, allowed me to talk of, like, think of the work in this, like, larger conversation, in this larger context, and, um, yeah, you find the right words to describe it. Okay. <laughs> did you start working with glass at CCA, or did that happen later? Um, that happened, like, my last semester at CCA. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I just was like, oh, like, this is definitely a material, like, I, I'm, like, down with, and, like, I can see in the work. I was also, like, really trying to, um, like the the piece that you saw with like the hand and, and the cup down on the floor mm -hmm. like that was like resting on a chair for the longest time and I was like so I was always trying to find like a like a wood like building material like wood or concrete or metal something to like what can I present these these silicone objects on right and yeah just glass like seemed to be just the right material it's like clean I like how it's like very minimal, mm -hmm. but um, it's yeah. the, the perfect material to tell that story. Yeah, yeah, and it kind of—I like how it also like kind of fades into the background. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like the um, your choices of um, using traditional display mechanisms to to kind of represent the work or present it in a different way, like the the tilted pedestal or the um, kind of the using. Of acrylic bar right. to present a piece of work. I mean, do you, do you remember, like, like I feel like you used the, I don't know if you made two or if you used the same crooked pedestal twice, but you had two different sets of work on a yeah. similar pedestal. Yeah. Like, what, do you, was that an existing thing or did you, like, make that discovery that you wanted to cut the bottom of it so that it did um, that? Well, it was definitely, like, so those pieces were made, like, in undergrad mm -hmm. slash like that gap between yeah, right. and grad school and I was thinking a lot about like I don't know I was this is like music and like a culture that I would like talk about with my friends but then when I was in this like art world mm -hmm. like 
nobody knew what that was. Right. So I was in very interested in like, how can I like intersect these two um, wor worlds or cultures? And so for me, the, the pedestal is such a like traditional vehicle to display art. So by, yeah, like by affecting it like that, by remove or like, yeah, by putting it on this tilt, in a way it's like this, a part of this culture mm -hmm. affecting this culture. Right. right. Um, yeah. And then you're addressing it with like a body of work called Lean, which is right. kind of funny. The little play on words. <laughs> yeah. I think I was really into like, yeah, clever titles at the time. <laughs> Yeah, that's the, the late undergrad <laughs> clever title phase you'll yeah. go through. Um, when you, do you feel like you're being critical of hip hop culture, or do you feel like you're being celebratory, or do you feel like you're being informative? Um, I, I definitely, I mean, I'm about it. So like, I definitely feel like it's more celebratory mm -hmm. coming from me. But I don't know. I think. I guess some people could read it as like critical, but I'm not offering any like opinions one way or the one way or another on the work. I'm just right. sort of presenting th these like parts of what I saw like in my upbringing in that space. Right. A little metallic. <laughs> Can't go wrong with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it, like it's it's a curious. Um, you know, I think it's it's something like like when you're bringing a um, a tiny little microcosm of a culture mm -hmm. in, into the art world, it's a, it's an exciting place, right. but often dangerous in that you're um, you're taking away a lot of what makes it so be special. what it is, right, right, yeah, um, and also maybe tokenizing it a little bit. But right. but I think the the way in which you're um, again you're setting it. It within the, the confines of art history um, in a way that's kind of special. I mean, do you, do you, does that weigh on you when you're kind of making these decisions or is that more? I mean, yeah, definitely it's something I think about and like I'm always, uh, I want to be with, responsible with how I'm presenting mm -hmm. the work and not just like throw it out there, obviously. Um, but from, yeah, like, I think you said it best, like, for me, I'm like, like I get anytime I see like any like parts of like southern hip hop or like South Florida, like I get so excited. So I'm like, I would love for like parts of that to be represented in the art world because right. these are things that I'm not seeing, you know, showing up there. Right. Like I don't, I don't know of any of many other artists that are like addressing those kind of you know, cultures. Right, right, but I, again, I think the neutrality is important because you're you're looking at it like a documentarian mm -hmm. almost, yeah. But and presenting it in a way that's, or like it's it's. Um, I think when I first saw your work, I I could have gone either way that you that, the, that you were either celebrating a cult, culture that you're a part of or one that you admire or one that you're just presenting. Right, and I think that the the that neutrality is really powerful because it doesn't. It doesn't allow anybody to discount the work uh, based on their preconceived notions of who right. you are, um, and I think that's really important when you're when you're addressing like culturally critical work for sure um, in the way that you're doing. Um, yeah, and I think neutrality—that's a perfect word. I also forgot to mention. And I think this is this ties into like this section of um, wanting to explore Florida more, but like my background. Um, my mom's white, my dad's Afro-Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so like being mixed, um, and like I've been thinking about this a lot more lately, um, but being mixed, like you're kind of like not enough for one side and not enough for the other. Yep. So for me, the space that I grew up in, in is such a like huge part of what informs my identity. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's I, the the work's almost more about identity than mm -hmm. than anything, um, but yeah, I think I don't know. I think ne neutrality is like a kind of a word that ties in there too. So yeah. Um. What uh, 
what, what do you see? What are you working on right now? Um, a, a lot of those video works. Um, yeah, like I'm actually so working on these the the molds that, or the cast that you saw with like the stuttering hands. Uh -huh. Doing a lot more of that now that I because I just like kind of figured out the right process. A lot of my work is like like this whole table is like little experiments. Mm -hmm. So like when I land on like a process that works for me or that is yielding the best way to present the work, I'm like, oh, okay, like now I can crank out right. a bigger work. Um, so yeah, so a lot of those. And then I'm also, I'm actually, so I'm going back to Florida in a couple days and I'm really excited about, I'm going to be making like, there's this, do you, are you familiar with Terraza Florida? Mm -hmm. So like Terraza is all over South Florida, right? <laughs> And so I'm going to be, like, doing this huge mold while I'm down there of the floor. Oh, okay. And then creating these, um, yeah, creating these basically, like, mats for these things to, like, sit on rather than having them on the floor, like, these silicone mats. Oh, wow. Yeah, so just really, again, trying to, like, bring parts of that space, um, parts of my home, like, mm -hmm. into the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that there's not, again, there's not that, like, disconnect. Right. People can't like mistake that. That's cool. So, uh, where are you living? Uh, where are you living? Are you living in San Francisco or Oakland? I am. I live in the Mission. Yeah, and I'm lucky, very lucky. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I like. I mean, I think a lot about like uh, Oakland hip hop culture and yeah. how it's so rooted in Southern hip hop culture. True. Like, yeah. like, um, like mo most Black culture from Oakland is like third generation Oakland, and that first generation moved here from the south for sure yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of odd overlap I think especially with hip hop culture the particular like grills and um, yeah yeah definitely. like a lot of those there's like those there's those gestures that exist in Oakland culture that people follow um, yeah. and hang into I mean have you had any interaction with with the scene here in Oakland I have and I've like I've I remember like a couple of advisors kind of being like well what about the Bay Area like they've got like a huge hip hop scene and I'm like yeah but like like I'm not from the Bay like I don't have any like reason or like I guess agency right talking about that but yeah there's definitely like overlap with like um a lot of like the symbols and, and mm. gestures and everything for sure yeah do you see that as a, f a future collaboration do you do you think that that your work is so personal that kind of turning it into um like a, like, like expanding it beyond the the place that is personal, um, makes sense. Um, I could definitely see like collaborations with, like for example, like a Bay Area artist or like Oakland based artist, mm -hmm. and like utilizing some of these techniques or something. But yeah, like I would never like go forth and like make work about Oakland. Or, uh -huh. On my own, like, right? Yeah, but that's, yeah, definitely a collaboration. That's a like a very proud and thoughtful line <laughs> in your drawing, but, but it's also really interesting that you're kind of really holding on to what the work means to you and, and how that comes about. For sure, yeah, I think that it's all about regional specificity for me. Like, mm -hmm. I think I don't know. I think a lot. Like, I would argue that sometimes, like, the places we come from, like regionally speaking are like inform who we are almost more so than like our genetic background or bio biological but I don't know. yeah I hope not <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, where, where are we at time um, I think I'm gonna open it up to some questions I'm gonna make some announcements first um, so uh, <coughs> as I just mentioned, th so thank you. Thank you um, but we're gonna we're gonna again we'll open it to questions and we'll just keep this going as long as people are interested in chatting. Um, we aggregate um, being displaced as we are, um, are uh, being as ambitious as is possible. Um, so we currently have two shows up concurrently, uh, and another one opening um, in about three weeks. So. Um, when this is over, we'll turn the lights back on. And those of you that have not experienced 5556, um, the uh, the Kalagi Sisters uh, multimedia exhibition that is happening here at Warehouse 416 in our little pop-up aggregate spaceship gallery, um, you can totally participate in that. 
you you are also sitting in the space between space exhibition, which was a curated exhibition of aggregate space gallery members, where we reached out to them with um, some simple prompts about what it means to be making making artwork for a space uh, that is also for a space that is spaceless, um, which is a mouthful, but. Uh, Shaya Xerius can talk further about that and how it was curated and how it was put together and, and the work that has come about um, because of that. And then on December 6th, 5th, 4th, 5th, Thursday the 5th, uh, San Francisco Art Institute was generous enough to give us their, um, their big gallery space for an exhibition of Jefferson Pinder's work, which was something that we've been working on for many, many years. Um, he's a Chicago artist uh, and is coming out um, with five new video exhibitions to uh, five new video pieces um, to show in the Walter McBean Gallery at SFAI. So that's going to open um, the first Thursday of December and is going to be really, really exciting to have a, a big video s uh, exhibition in that space. And so um, Aggregate is doing okay, but we're always looking for more donors, um, particularly people that want to be in it with us for the long haul. Um, there is possible really good space news around the corner, although I don't want to jinx it by being too enthusiastic, um, but it's all contingent on us being able to find people that want us to continue to do this work in the Bay. So if you know people that want to keep seeing us um, present this kind of work and to set this space aside for artists that are cons considering liminal space in such a thorough um, and aggressive way and to continue to show our art work by artists that um, are largely voiceless in the Bay Area and or uh, have to have their voices muted based on the ability to produce kind of large content and exciting and um, rigorous content. Um, let them know that we need their help. Um, and in part of that, um, this, this, ex this exhibition, this talk is partially uh, funded by the Andy Warhol Foundation. So uh, we're going to be giving Vincent a, a little check for his time and hopefully that, um, that money will support future projects of yours and um, kind of keep you active and thoughtful as a, um, a person that at least, uh, even, even if you end up leaving the Bay that you were here momentarily and that this place helped change your work for the better and helped raise your voice a little bit higher. So thank you, uh, thank you again for, for being here and being a part of this. Um, does anybody have any questions for Vincent? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I was curious. For someone um, looking at your work who is from South Florida, um, probably from one of the three counties that you mentioned, and like, you know, moves in those circles, like, um, and like listens to Ghana and like knows all the things, um, what, like, what is something, if there is something, like, new? or think about because you know it's not a niche culture for them it's like their culture and their culture so like um, is, is there a shift in perception um, like internally that you're hoping or that you've heard people express um I mean I think I mean at, at least for <coughs> I guess what I w want for the viewer or for that particular viewer is kind of like what happened for me with the work was like, these are things that I was um, experiencing outside of this like high art space. And I guess to, to realize that like parts of this culture are, are like, are like allowed in this space basically. Cause I think there's a lot of, even myself, like when I was like younger, younger, like just thinking that these, you know, like oh, like that's like the music I listen to, and that's like the things that I do on the weekend. Like this is my, mm -hmm. this is the art thing. This is like mm -hmm. business, basically. Like that's like for the weekend. Mm -hmm. And so, just like I guess, I don't know. I've I've had I've shown a lot of the work, and like had people that are like from that space come up to me like damn, like, I've never seen this in, like, a gallery. I've never seen this in, like, this white cube. And I, so I guess just, like, showing, you know, maybe, like, a younger, uh, a 
a younger like um, part of that part of that um, culture like younger kids like that like this is a, something that you know is worthy of this like this platform are fragmented I think that kind of came from this idea of like wanting the viewer to or allowing the viewer to sort of connect the dots not connecting them for the viewer um, yeah I guess I think this I think maybe that's why I was so drawn to the glass this there's like this fragility or like preciousness that comes with glass and that's n not typically how we view like um, different factions of like Southern hip hop culture, right? Um, I think also like I, I was I was thinking about this like recently, like a lot of times that type of music in particular, like that space is referred to as like the dirty South, right? <laughs> and so like presenting it in this like hyper clean the space like I don't know sort of like creates or gives like that that idea like some tension or like some I guess just thinking about that culture a little differently like allows for that to happen I mean I, I like I like your you, like you're criticizing it um, in this very uh, positive way based on the aesthetics and I think that that's like I love that that's the um, the imagery is so clear that then you are given this opportunity to really look at those choices that you're making and that you're making those very particular aesthetic choices um, like it's um, uh, a gesture drawing or like it's a, like a life drawing or still or like you know, you're, 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 you're existing in that place but your content is very consistently this other thing right um, and I think um, my contrast is like one of the, one of the, the four formal um, Things to address when <laughs> making a sculpture, you know, because you're, you're like you're living in that world. That's really cool. That's a great, great question. Basically, I do all of the th all the things I do. I'll do in like this. This is a stone, so like a it's like a dental stone actually. And in that state, that's like I'll get the mold from the model, then I'll cast stone into it, 
And then once it's in that stone stage, that's where I manipulate it. That's where I change it. That's where I attach things. And once I have everything stuttering how I want to have it, that's when I'll do a master mold, and that's when I'll cast silicone into that. Um, so yeah, the reason for using silicone as like this end, end product, I guess, is like because it's the closest material to skin, to the body. Um, and yeah, and for me, like that's, I don't know, like this idea of like hyper-realism or sculptural realism, like that's the best way to like in place the body in the space, I think. What are you making your early, your, your first casting molds out of? Like the, oh, like the, the first. The, from the from flesh. flesh. Um, like from the models, you mean? Yeah. Um, it depends uh, on the gestures. Sometimes I'll do silicone if it's a simple enough gesture, mm -hmm. like a silicone mold. Right. And, or I'll use alginate for other molds. Um, and that depends on like, yeah, gestures, timing sometimes. Um, if sometimes the model doesn't want silicone on them and they're like, <laughs> I'll do the algae instead. So it, it depends on a couple of different factors. But right. Yeah. Cool. And the dental stuff, where do you, do you, is it like Douglas the Surgeon style? Like, no, no. This is like, like cancer stuff? Yeah. It's so. I've had teeth casting stuff. So. Yeah. So I was using it. I like mm -hmm. had a bunch because I was making these golds and mm -hmm. I was using the dental stone to do the dental impressions to cast into it. And I just, it, it's a stone. It's basically like a derivative of plaster or uh -huh. nitric or whatever. And it's, um, so I just was using it to like do quick, okay, I want like a couple fingers. Like, let me just throw it in here. Uh -huh. And then I started to do more and more. And, uh, and I don't know, to me, these white like hand castings, they're like super, they're like much clearer than like, plaster mm -hmm. and to me they're very they're really beautiful actually and they're like like almost like high definition I don't know something about the the clarity in like dental stone yeah um but so I started to do like full full like castings and everything and I th like I don't know I'm, I've been starting to think yeah more about like presenting those because like mm -hmm. the dental stone is also like a huge I mean if you're like getting grills done you're gonna like run into dental stone a couple right. times you know um, so yeah so it's a it's an, in this like backwards kind of way it's like also a part of the culture <laughs> right so, yeah that's, that's great but yeah I just I had access to it I guess so that's why, <laughs> that's why I was using it. <coughs> sorry I have a cold I'm not coughing as part of my life does anybody have any uh, more questions One more? Somebody has something that they're just finishing thinking about. Yes. For the one of uh, uh, the Sculpture Mills, mm -hmm. the person you know, like, throwing the throwing, yep. um, how did you cast that? <laughs> um, Shouts out to my boy Woody. <laughs> 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 yeah, we just Link, can you back up the, just so we can look at it one more time? It's a really incredible piece of work. This one right here, yeah. Um, yeah. So we did a face cast. <laughs> we did a face cast, and um, it was sad. It was yeah. It was a long day. Yeah. Um, no, but it, I think we did that one in silicone, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we did a silicone mold, and then we cast. I actually cast into silicone into that, and that's like typically. A lot of the mold making decisions I'm doing are like against the like mold making oh, traditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's a it's a mold making no no to cast silicone into silicone because yeah. silicone wants to stick to oh, yeah. silicone. But if you release it the right way, you can get it out of there. So yeah. <laughs> so you better. Or your yeah, fit's not going to exactly, be happy yeah. anywhere. You base it the whole way. Yeah, but um, yeah. So it was a silicone mold, and then we cast into it. It's all so haunting. The silicone and the transparency yeah. is so good. I like, yeah, I like how, I don't know. I'm still, the, the glass is still like a pretty new element to me, so I'm still like, I'm still fucking with the glass so hard. Like. Yeah. Are you are you doing glass casting at CCA? Um, 
No, right now? Yeah. No, no, I'm just, um, like, I just found out I got this residency with them, so I'll have access to their glass facilities, but I only do, like, blowing. Oh, okay. Blowing. Um, Did you get at the Crucible, or, or there? No, this was at CCA, oh. like, but when I was attending. They do both. At, at, at Crucible in, in West Oakland, they casting. do casting. Also. Oh, yeah. And you can take classes for pretty cheap and then use the facilities in the I haven't, yeah, I haven't. The only glass casting I've done is um, sand casting. Oh, okay. And I don't like how, like, it kind of, the glass loses its clarity a little bit. Right. Which I'm not, the whole reason, or, like, a huge part of why I'm using the glass is because of the clarity, so I wasn't too down with that. But so you're, 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 you're blowing stuff traditionally and then damaging that before they fully cure. Yeah, or, like, just, like, I'll be squeezing it or, like, kind of, like, because I'm, like, I'm always thinking about that, like, lean influence. Yeah. And, like, so that's a, yeah. I'm always trying to make things a little, like, kind of lethargic. A little right. Like but you're also, br- but like, similar to these other, <laughs> similarly to, to these other processes, you're breaking the, the you're, you're breaking the rules and you're yeah. breaking the process to kind of generate something that's a, a bit off. For sure, yeah. I'll, I'll, like, I'm only realizing that now that you mentioned it, but, like, a lot of what I do is, like, yeah, breaking these, you know, glass blowing traditions or these mold making traditions. And right. I don't know what that means yet, but maybe in 10 years, our, right. our next artist talk. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. Well, we said, I, mean, like, I, I, should, like, I should reference, I was just uh, looking up in the book um, that the, the very first person that we gave the MFA invitational to mm-hmm. was this um, sculptor, Alyssa Lampesis okay. from UC Davis, and this was in 2014. Uh, and Alyssa was like famous for going to Douglas and Sturgis in Richmond and just saying what like what haven't I used yet oh my gosh yeah. and then so and you can totally tell in their work yeah. um, but it was really difficult to show that work because people just wanted to touch it because oh. everybody every single piece had totally different textures and totally different um, stuff and I'm sure you go through that too where people want to just like grab a bit of it and then realize that it's yeah. like that's super flexible I shouldn't touch that yeah yeah or like <laughs> Maybe are like reading it as yeah like rigid when it's like absolutely just rigid. barely hanging there yeah yeah, yeah so definitely yeah <laughs> but yeah there's a this is your part part of this history now so it's welcome to it <laughs> um, thank you all so much for being here and um, I hope to see you at Flashpoint or uh, here well this shows up till the sixteenth is that true so through the through the sixteenth so one more week um, and so is that show and then we'll we'll um, Oh, yes, Willis. How do they show up for you and support your work? What do you, what do you, I don't know if I missed it, but what do um, you do? Yeah, what do you have next? Do you have a next, the next outgoing show, exhibition? Yeah, the next show I have is actually a solo show at Moad. Oh, that's great. That opens in June of 2020. Excellent. So it's some time out, but yeah, it'll be lit, definitely. That's huge. <laughs> that's fantastic. For sure, yeah, come through. It'll be fun. Yeah, <laughs> no, we will. We'll, 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 we'll support it. Well, cool. thanks for taking that opportunity. Thanks for the force plug, Willis, because I forgot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna kind of uh, put the chairs away, but feel free to hang out a little bit, ask us questions. We're all gonna hang out in a little while. So, thank you all for being here. Yeah, man. Yeah, no worries. Amazing. That was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. It's so great to hear you.